Celtics find themselves down 0-2 in the Eastern Conference Finals. Can they bounce back against this tough Miami Heat team? I'm Sierra Goodwill here with Jimmy Toscano, Joe Sway Pavone, and Bobby Manning. Heat now 10-1 and in the playoffs. Just an incredible playoff run so far. And they're proving that they have the talent, yes, but that they're deep and they're playing together. Something that really fell apart for the Celtics in game two. If this continues, is this series over? Because I personally don't see the Celtics winning four out of the next five games against this Heat team playing at that caliber. I don't think it's over necessarily. Now the fight and some of the things that we talked about in the other video after concerned me a bit because I felt like these are just minor things they have to pick up, like getting back especially. Um, and then just – you know, some of the shot selection and offensive flow. We saw progress in that tonight. Ennis Cantor, valuable minutes tonight. They made adjustments. Romeo Langford, that was tough because it was working for 80 Ooh. seconds and then he goes down injured. So, like, All and then, you know, Joe Sway, Joe Sway made a suggestion after the game that I don't think we're going to mention here either, but they, they're, <laughs> they're doing everything they can. Um, the you know, X, X's and O's wise. <laughs> Uh, so I don't think it's over, but I'm growing a little more concerned after some of the post-game developments there. Yeah, it's it's concerning. It is because of the, uh, the timing of this whole thing, right? I mean, they don't have a whole lot of time. I think that extra day would be a lot more, <laughs> a lot more helpful if it was right now for this Celtics team because that's what they need. Yeah. They just need to take a deep breath and, and think things through. What really frustrated the most with the Celtics was obviously uh, the lack of transition defense, but it seems like it happens in doses. It's like – once the uh, the lead is gone, or at least close to it, it's almost like they go into straight panic mode, and it's like a minute left in the fourth quarter in their mind. I saw that's how I saw it in that third quarter, and it's just snowballed and snowballed. They got that breather right before the fourth quarter. They looked a whole lot better, but they just haven't been able to 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 keep that uh, intensity and, and keep that physicality. You know, I love seeing Inez Cancer tonight because I thought that he was going to bring that, and I thought that he that was, was so good in the first half. Up. He was, he was, but again, consistency and can they prolong this? You know, it's, they have, they, they've done, they're doing the things they need to do to beat the Miami Heat. They're just not keeping it going consistently. And the Miami Heat are going to make you, they're going to make you burn. You know, they're going to they're make you pay for it every single time. They've been doing it all season long. So are you saying it's not over or are you saying it's over? It's not over. It is okay. not over, but stop blowing leaves because, Miami he is not too. Okay, I, I'm also going to say it is not over. I can't say it's over yet because of a few reasons. One, the Heat haven't overmatched the Celtics. You're not seeing a talent discrepancy there. In fact, the Celtics have gone up big against the Heat in both games. They've just blown those leads. To, to me, it, it comes down to, in this bubble especially, because the bubble's like the great equalizer, the team that plays like a team is going to win. And, and we're seeing that with the Nuggets right now, right? I mean, they've made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals, and nobody thought that they were talented enough to get there. And the Celtics have made it this far. They're a team. The Heat have made it this far because they're playing like a team. Look at the Sixers. They didn't have a chance. Um, what, what, when the Celtics get into trouble is when they stop playing like a team down the stretch. They stop doing what's gotten them to this point. They start to play hero ball. They start to play iso ball. They make stupid turnovers. They dribble into traffic, and they go nowhere. Whereas the Heat seem to continue to play with that, like whip the ball around, give it to the guy who's open and, you know, make the smart play. So I'm not going to say it's over. If the Celtics lose game three, it's over. It's over <laughs> if the Celtics lose game three, but not yet. I'm okay with being the only pessimist of the group right now. But Jason Tatum <laughs> obviously saying it's overwhelming to think of it like you have to win the next four out of the five games against a team that just beat you the last two. So he said, you just got to win the next one. So what do the Celtics need to do to win the next one? Is the X factor a possible Gordon Hayward return or can they do it with the group they have? I don't think Gore Hayward's going to be ready for Saturday. If he wasn't ready today, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But if you survive Saturday, that layoff to Wednesday could make a big difference there, especially that he's been upgraded to doubtful into this game. So on Saturday, if they don't have him, we talked about him post game. You got to get Jalen Brown going. And that burst he gave them at yeah. the end of regulation tonight was huge. He's drilling the corner threes. They found him in his spot um, against the middle of the zone when Smart passed up some of those shots when he had open space there. I could see Brown drilling those, so maybe you put him in there. Just making him a more involved part of the offense. Jimmy, we had a big fight in that Toronto series when he shot 30 times. 
I love that because he was aggressive. He was involved. He should be <laughs> the second option on this team on many nights. And that's what we need to see tonight. It's what we're definitely going to need to see in game three. Uh, I don't think I ever want to see Jalen take 30. Unless he's going off. That's <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, Jaylen. listen. Meet me that's a lot of shots. <laughs> that's a whole lot of shooting. So, but I'm with you, though. He does need to get more touches. And I think that had some, some – uh, again, I'm speculating again, but maybe they were talking about that in the locker room. Maybe that was, you know – They that did was talk about it uh, in practice the other day. I mean, at halftime, it just seemed like from a body language perspective, like just from looking at him, it just seemed like he was constantly open and looked visibly frustrated. And then there were two instances where he did get the ball. One of them uh, – one of the passes went through his legs, and he sort of gave him that look like, come on, man. And then another yeah. one in the corner, deep in the corner at night, a, a three-pointer that would have been – you know, easy for him to make just was out of out of reach, you know. So I just think the frustration sort of uh, boiled over a bit because then he finally does get to, uh, you know, take things into his own hands. And look what happened. I mean, he was one three-pointer away from saving the Celtics, and that, which would have been, what, a, a nine-point swing or, or maybe a, a, a five- or six-point swing, something like that. It would have been all Jalen at the end of that game. So, yeah, he's earned it at this point. And if you're Brad Stevens, you got to set him up. 100%. Well, for all the rest of our Celtics content, you can find it on our website at clnsmedia.com and on our YouTube channel at Celtics All Access.